Before we get into today's video, as some of you may know, the I'm There podcast is hosting an Edison tournament on October 28th called the Frozen Soul Cup. There will be a special rule in place that you can only use one of each card in your deck. For example, you would only be able to play one Treeborn Frog or one Elemental Hero Neil's Alias or one Blackwing Blues at the Far North. Everything is limited to one. This greatly changes deck building and technical play, but I will let you guys figure that part out. The prize for this tournament is already up to $300 cash for the top cut. If you would like to donate to the prize pool, please reach out to me. With that being said, Said, I hope you enjoyed today's video. All right, welcome back to the channel. I'm here today with Philip Campo, who just got top 16 at RBET Orlando last week, and he played Hero Frog, as most of you may know. I uh, I had a hand in this deck, if you will. So why don't you tell us about your experience and what made you choose to play this deck? Because me and you played each other at Ultimate Time Wizard um, at Nationals this year, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was, you were on Black Wings. Solid match too. Yeah. yeah, I um I wasn't even fully expecting to go as far as I did in the uh, Ultimate Time Wizard tournament at Nats. I was registered in the main event, and uh, I oh, you play modern? Round. Yeah, yeah. I um I was playing modern for a while, yeah. and um certain things in life led me to start playing Pokemon TCG more than I played modern Yu Gi Oh. Uh, I was already booked in for Nats anyway, and uh, the Nats trip was good for multiple reasons not only did it lead to me being sponsored by the team that i'm sponsored now inspire tcg uh because i roomed with all of them off of just knowing one person in the entire airbnb and we had like 13 people in there <laughs> um, nice but um i uh i also you know started dipping into edison even harder than i did before i played like a few of the luxury gaming online edison tournaments and uh just like kind of bs in here and there on uh on db um I can't remember where I like took the main like I mean you can only do so much to black wings but I think I like started with somebody's list and that's just what I had built I was like screw it you know I'll register for both events yeah and if I end up not wanting to play the main I'll play the side event and uh I, I won my first round in the main event it was a 40 something minute game because we went into time it was a runic mirror match and oh it my was god horrible. <laughs> it was absolutely horrible but i started double dipping and i uh i beat my first round opponent in the uh ultimate time wizard in like seven minutes yeah because black uh, wings can do that i also won round one really fast i played against lice and he summoned lila and passed and i just was like stratos yeah, swap frog fairies, miracle it was just like <laughs> yeah it's so easy sometimes with this deck um and then me and you when we played round four by by round three of the main event I was already dropped and we were going into round three of the side event and um i played you i think round four, four. yeah we played round yeah, four I so was, we were both three so then. Sad. yeah you went first game three and you just set one past and i looked at my hand it was like it was like whirlwind, whirlwind shora deck dev and i was like oh i'm about to blow him out like <laughs> <laughs> and i go whirlwind shora and it got dust tornado and i was like damn set one past so it was also so i went summon swap frog send treeborn and set dust tornado bounce swap frog pass so i have treeborn oh, access right, right. because what ends up happening and i remember this really vividly is i uh i brought back treeborn frog and i kaius your shora and then you just had blizzards in your hand and you lost from that so it was like the yeah. whole duel came down to did i set dust, tornado, dust or not? tornado right and yeah. i literally thought and this is what i said in my head i said he because game two you blew me out i won game one game two you blew me out with whirlwind and so after the way game two played out i was like you know what i usually won't set dust tornado turn one but I was like, I feel like, like you're kind of you're kind of lucky. Like I, I was like, I think this guy's kind of lucky. So I'm going to set Dust Tornado and I'll deal with the consequences of that. And I was like, if he never sets a oh, yeah, back row the whole game, I do well. Like I'm, I'm not a bad player. I don't no, think you're, you're clearly not. You got top 16 at this event, which was like 190 right. players or 80 players or some shit. Frazier, I finished 16th. I was like fingers, oh, toes, okay. cheeks crossed. You're like, like <laughs> not cheeks. I, uh, bro. Yeah, bro, the cheeks was crossed, everything. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm sitting there and I'm looking and um, I roomed with uh, with one of the judges for this event and while they're calling out top 16, I'm just like waiting and they get to like 12. And I yeah. look over at like some of the people working and my friend just looked and he's just like, he's like, like, you know, hand motions, like, you know, no sweat. And I'm like, no way I got in. Yeah. Like no way. And well, that's like good that he, he kind of gave you a, a hint. <laughs> But I was sweating them. But so he should have. <laughs> what he should have done is he should have started shaking his head like, "I'm sorry." You know what I mean? Like just to kind of oh play it off. No, he, dude, my anxiety is already bad enough. Mine too. <laughs> my anxiety is so bad. Yeah, that's that's fire though. You got in a 16th place with this deck. Uh, so what did you change? I can already see one thing. I see these two electric viruses in the side deck. And is there anything else that you changed from the way I had I think it built? It was, 
I think it was just the compulse and the third crow, if I'm remembering correctly. Okay. Um, and then the mist worm in the side uh, extra deck should have been the flame bell synchro. Right. Uh, that's that's actually what I had listed. Um, like or not listed. That's what I had in my deck. I changed it in DB, and I didn't hit save before I clicked export Ex and yep. print. Um. So I had Mistworm, and that's how I got my game loss. Because against dragons, you know, I figure, okay, I'm already gonna, I'm gonna get stomped game one, and then I put in the viruses, the the vanities, mm -hmm. probably the soul exchange, and then yeah. depending if they're on decree or not, or if I see decree, the the mirror force torrential. I think you should side these in as well against dragons because they don't really side out magical stone and pot of avarice anymore. Well, it wasn't the dragon turbo list. Oh, it was, um, it was the control dragon that got top four. I think it was right. uh, Robbie Frazee. Yeah. So no dragon turbo topped RBT Orlando then. I don't think. I think it was just him and a disaster dragon. If I'm, uh, if I'm not right, mistaken. right. Okay, yeah, yeah. So those are good. Those are good side ends. Then this card is amazing against the slower dragon deck because you actually have time to just like you know they're going to make a slow push usually, and then you have time to like take their monster attack and then you know tribute it and summon a guy and all that. So this this is actually really good tech. I, I, I like this end puppet plan, puppet plan for hero beat because if they have Dyna plus Alias or Dyna plus Stratos or whatever, you can like discard take stratos or alias attack over dina and then main phase to tribute it for a monarch or, or do like a substitute play or whatever so i like yeah. i like these these types of cards what I, they also do is they play around certain things so like puppet plant plays around gemini spark because you don't have anything on the field when you activate it so this is pretty That's cool good. yeah i uh i was just expecting a lot of dragons and like it can get use against uh machina as well which actually one of my two losses in swiss was to the machina control that finished top eight i played him round six and he just efficiently two owed me um, really i didn't draw i didn't draw too well but okay because that match is anyway. usually in the favor of the frog deck now because the mocking control deck i do think that's a very good deck i have it at like pretty to, it's pretty close to the top of a tier for me i think that a tier decks of course they can beat the s tier decks or whatnot like that there's not much of a difference between a tier and s tier except most of the time s tier decks are just a little bit more consistent and the a tier decks are like you know they have like something slightly wrong with them to keep them a little lower than everything else that is like really really top notch but mocker control is a great deck and if you don't draw well against it or just draw like a good hand against it uh you can get you can get run over for sure so i, I could see how that could happen but what was your other loss in swiss uh the other loss was round five to a uh hero beat with deep sea diva Okay, so the Diva Hero Beat deck. Yeah, that yeah. that matchup, man, it is so randomly difficult. Like, it is not easy at all. And it's crazy because, so if you do block them, then you usually win, right? Like the game, anytime I do block that deck, it pretty much gets so bad for them. Like, they just get destroyed. But the games where I do not do block them are incredibly hard, where I just get beat down really fast and pressure it really fast. And it just feels like, holy hell, that deck is so aggressive. Yeah, it can be. My um my first four rounds, uh I played against two fairies, another diva hero beat, and a um this was the wild one that I had never seen. It was a hero frog monarch list, but he was playing Death Frog also. Oh, what did he do with it? Yeah. Um he he would well not against the mirror, uh, but against the um like say like other, you know, diva hero beats, maybe black wings, he would um he was like, Yeah, I uh I do block and then I feel like a lot of the times if I don't have a Caius, I can't really do anything and put right. pressure on them. So he's like, I'll just, you know, find a way to go do two dupes and then like say like Treeborn comes up, you substitute, and then you put two death frogs on the field, and he's just two dupes, two death frogs, and he's just like, Oh, I just put pressure on him with that. I was like, yeah. That's pretty cool. I've thought but about I Death Frog, but I don't, don't want to draw, draw it. Death Frog. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're on the same page. I do not want to draw that shit. And if I play Death Frog, I feel like at that point I have to play Murray of Gree, and then I'm not playing the hero package unless I'm going over 40 cards or, or sacrificing on defense or somewhere. So it becomes like a whole you're playing a whole different deck at that point. Um, yeah, but my, yeah, uh, my first four rounds, I didn't drop a game. I, I two owed my first four opponents. Damn. You must've felt amazing. Yeah. Cause the, the tournament was only I eight did. rounds. And then round five and six, I lost. I uh, I went to game three against the Diva Hero beat that I lost to, and rounds uh, that in round five and round six, I lost to the Mock into Control that I got two owed. And then um, round seven, I two owed Black Wings. And round eight, I played another Mirror. Uh, I won game one. He won game two. Game three, we have maybe like seven or eight minutes in yeah. the round. Which if even you know even if we had like normal time rules, 
uh, well, normal, if we had Edison time rules, um, I would have felt a lot more comfortable, but I was like, okay, I think I need to put pressure on pretty fast. As I'm drawing my hand, I'm thinking this, and I see Infernal Prodigy Vanity's Fiend, and I'm like, yeah, we're just sending it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah, because what and, can he do? Um, yeah, and and it got me there. And he he didn't he didn't see anything. He had uh, he had a bunch of heroes and and a bunch of frogs that weren't dupe frog. So it was just like just start running over set treeborns and swaps, and I start putting more pressure on, and and I got there. And then the top sixteen match, I just got well match uh, the game because I got a game loss. Um, so you got a game I, loss I to be clear for Miss Worm. You had Miss Worm in there, and when you exported your deck electronically. Uh, it it kept it as Misworm even though you changed it to Flamva or Curzius. It's basically like so. I actually demonstrate what this looks like. So if you have, so if we go put Misworm in here, if this is something that I don't, I don't want this to happen to anyone else. And I know yeah. that there were a couple game losses in top sixteen of RBE team uh, Orlando. Mm -hmm. So if you do this right, so we save the deck, we save the deck with Misworm in it, and then we're gonna take the Misworm out. We're gonna change it. So this is like last the, the night before the tournament. You're like, all right, I want to play Flamvo guy, and I agree with this because the the Misworm never comes up for me ever. Um, so you right. put this in your deck. When you go to export this, it is going to switch this back to Missworm because you didn't save it when you, before you click the, the export button. Yep, yeah, because the last save file was the Missworm. So, you know, God forbid I would have made any other changes. Look at this. We but, just exported yeah, it, and Ms. now Worm's it's showing Missworm. So if you don't notice that that happened, which is very easy to not notice it, I guess, like, you could just end up getting a game loss. So this this is a thing that kind of sucks that it just did that, because look at the deck, right? We thought we were exporting this, but because we didn't click save, it exported it like this. So that's just a little yep. thing. If you don't know that already, I don't want anyone to uh, get a game loss from that. It's just like a little, hopefully help somebody in the future. Um, but yeah, so you, you got a game loss in top 16, which means that you're already down a game to come into it, and then you have to play against the guy who is, was he he was undefeated, right? Because he was... He was eight, he eight and oh yeah right because you're 16th so you play against first yeah. c so he he's having a great day he's fucking eight oh yeah he plays against the game loss and top cut which is insane like yeah yeah it was it was it was kind of served up on a on a silver platter for him yeah. that one and uh i feel like you, you said in the discord that you felt that i would have the uh the the better like matchup there um i went into it feeling like i was gonna not like punt, but it was basically like punting game one, just depending on, um, on like, you know, how hard he draws. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that guy, he was, he, he was opening future fusion, like it was his job. Right. And so like, I said that to you in discord. So when you, when you topped, I went into our, I'm their podcast discord server. And I was like, I think the matchup is frog favored as long as they don't draw future fusion every game. Like, I think that frogs will win against that deck. But if they just draw that card specifically, it's obviously incredibly hard for any deck to beat them. It's not a frog yeah, problem. Just, it's like it any deck. They're so quick because like end of their first turn, they just have two twenty eight hundred bodies, and then that turns into way more the next turn. Yes. And it's, uh, I remember when Edison was still in the the beginning stages of getting solved, and everybody's like, "Yeah, every deck can every deck is pretty much good, but like every deck is also bad because yeah. there's so much wrong." And now we're getting more refined, and people are like modernizing stuff and even his list if you if you like you know go and look at his like with the the triple upstart and and everything else it was just super fine-tuned to just do the same thing every yep. time that was a uh, fits fits one deck devastators four with that and okay. and i think that so somebody asked me recently about like what do i think about upstart goblin because he he was saying that when you first started playing edison you thought that all the decks should be playing upstart that they could be playing upstart to fix them and all that and he was like well it seems like no one plays upstart but i was like if you actually look at 2023 upstart has been winning a lot of tournaments upstart so the guy who got second at orlando the blackwing player he played triple upstart in his deck um okay and then uh fitz won a tournament with triple upstart in his dragon deck obviously ghost rider the very next week won with dragon turbo which also plays triple upstart uh and i've seen other list of decks i've seen black wings topping with it i've seen like all kinds of different decks topping with upstart goblin this year so i think edison is still very young in general like the you know it's, it feels like we've been playing it for a while because we've just been playing this one format but if you look at how old it is compared to something like goat format it is a very young format in that regard and a lot of the decks they're way more refined this year but they're still not perfect like we're going to be two years from now if we are all still playing and see like oh shit we used to play this back in 2023 
And now, you know, more people will realize that maybe maybe more decks should be playing Upstar Goblin, right? Like maybe in a tournament where you have to play an eight round tournament, maybe increasing your percentages just slightly like that is actually worth it because it's going to be hard to separate yourself from the other Hero Frog players in the room, from the other Blackwing players in the room, from the other Value Turbo players in the room or whatever decks that you decide to play it in. And maybe those percentage points where you're, I, I just have a slightly higher chance to draw Dark Arm. I have a slightly higher chance to draw Miracle Fusion. Like that could be the difference in you doing well or not. I know for Black Wings, Whirlwind is the best card in the deck, one of the best cards in the entire format. And so just having a higher chance to draw your Black Whirlwinds, I think it goes from 28% to like 30%. Um, that 2% could be the difference. Like you open up Whirlwind a game that you would have not opened up Whirlwind could be the difference between you winning and losing, so. Yeah. Yeah, I know you mentioned in the Discord about doing like a Christmas tournament. Yes. And um, having like, you can play one card from like anywhere in Yu-Gi-Oh!, and a lot of people were saying, you know, like, you know, band cards, link monsters, bringing up black wings. There's a, I think there's a black wing now that's like a five star and it lets you normal summon him without a tribute. And, uh, he, he lets you put black whirlwind from your deck, uh, straight face up on the field. Well, that's not okay. Yeah. No. So I was just like, oh man, maybe that would, you know, make black wings really, really good. <laughs> yeah. That sounds, that sounds unhinged. I want to take your deck out for a spin uh see see you mean you mean your deck <laughs> uh, whatever it's all the same i want to take the deck yeah. out for a spin i haven't played hero frogs in a while so i've been i've been messing around with a lot of other things just to see like if my feelings changed on any of the decks test duel i don't know if i want to yeah go that's the... <laughs> yeah that <laughs> name kind of turned yeah that name turned me off all right you can see my screen and everything just fine right yeah you're all good all right Another change that I was like thinking about making was finding something to replace Malicious Edge, just because he can be kind of awkward sometimes. But I the like time, the searchable. It's, it's it's a searchable tribute that also the piercing comes in. So sometimes people will just leave Preborns on the field, or like you know, it's it's really good to it, it feels really good to just slam him into like any set, being like, okay, it's gonna be a Raiko, right? You destroy him. I got a hero in the grave for Miracle, and you're taking damage, and it's not like laughable damage like that's like you know, a quarter of their life yeah no malicious edges for me he's been pretty good i've beat over multiple stardust armor masters that are made with value um the piercing like you said that definitely can come up and i think more importantly than anything is the search oh this is a bad matchup the searchable the whole the whole fact that it's a searchable tribute monster is a really big deal oh yeah, no doubt what a draw Right, so that's a that's a that's a hamster or a Raiko. <laughs> like, yeah, that's not getting through. Like I'm, uh, we're doing this, so we're in main phase right now. Okay, and then we're also going to yeah, we're just gonna go full throttle. Oh yes, we want to see it. Yeah, I'm just going in. For a second, um, before the event, I also thought about changing the Malicious Edge out for a second ocean, just mm -hmm. for, like, what you just did, like, pitch the ocean, summon swap, just to have, like, an extra water and an extra hero. Yeah. I, um, I've um, i never had ocean stick around on the field for more than one turn either, so I don't know how that feels. I can't relive the big city days, you know? Yeah. You're just pulling Stratos back every time. Hero Frog is fucking broken. Look at what's happening. <laughs> it's basically a modern deck. <laughs> yeah, it's so broken. Does he have the gores? I don't care. That's yeah, the that's the worst point. part is that like I genuinely don't care. Uh okay. Get us the Caius back and yeah, I'm gonna yeah, play this because I, I don't want to draw I... Stratos. I'm just gonna get him to my hand now. Yeah, like, what's he gonna do? Summon Jane, attack swap frog, <laughs> pass. <laughs> like, fuck are you gonna Mil do? Mill Necrogarda. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> like, yeah, like, what are you gonna do? <laughs> what are you actually gonna do, my guy? Like, it's so bad. This deck is so broken. Did you side in Crow against Lysorn? Against Lightsworn, um, so not being able to see if he was playing the fairy version. I know we don't I mean, know we what build. Heralded. Right, we didn't get heralded, so I think we're okay. Um, not putting this into. Yeah, I think I think without knowing if it's fairy or not, just those four are fine. Yeah, uh, I'm thinking um, about this heavy storm, like, cause he's gonna 
The thing is, Lightsworn and Fairies, they could technically sell like mask or restrict and shit like that. Mm-hmm. So it's always tricky thinking about. I mean, as long as you're keeping the Regeki breaks in, I don't think too many of them side decree against us. Um, right. So <laughs> I personally do uh, not care for Rise in this match. I'm going to side out one of these. Yeah. I'll side out that. I'll side out that. And then the heavy and at least keep the space. Yeah, know? I'll keep the MSTN and then just go like this way because I, we we technically do not know what he's actually playing yet. Yeah, he could just be playing like Fayu Turbo with a bunch of Light Swarms and Judgment Dragon. Our hand is cracked again. The deck really like uh, when it misses, it misses bad, but it doesn't happen often. Yeah, like, you have those weird hands, but that's like once in a blue moon, you know. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, he is playing uh, Mystic Strike though. Was so that the cre- no, that's avarice. <laughs> yeah. So this is just regular lights when I want to say because I see Wolf and Pot Avarice. So like, well, you remember Silverman was playing the uh the the one copy of Wolf in the the Fairy Lights one now. Yeah, I played that for a minute. That was fun. I won a couple Light and Darkness mats with that deck. Shout out to Silverman. <laughs> Where's Ocean? 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 Here he is. I do like playing against like Light Sworn, even though it's, you know, kind of a shaky matchup. I like just being able to be aggressive because it's like, if I don't do this, I'm going to lose. And if I do this, I'm going to lose if the cards are in their favor. So it's yeah. like rolling the dice. I just get to go in. Okay. So in this case, I'm probably going to go main phase two. Yeah. I want to go main phase two. Um, hmm. I am probably going to bounce the swap. Let me see. I have Rageki Break, which I'm going to use Rageki Break on this. And I have Junk Synchron to get this back. So I kind of want to just do that. But also Battle Fate. Yeah, I'm just going to bounce this. Yeah, because then that opens up a um, uh, eight star synchro play next turn to you. Yeah. Like, I kind of wanted to bounce the Stratos because, just because I could get like a Frontal Prodigy to go with the Junk Synchron. But because the game is going a lot faster than I expected. I'm just gonna do it this way. And he, he hasn't really milled too much. He hasn't sarked for a JD, so we're not like on a visible clock. Right. Okay. So three light sworn, one JD's engrave. See anytime and I just stopped playing Tragodia in a lot of decks because yeah. like I never get six cards in hand with Trag. I always draw it when I have like one or two of them. Me cards. too. Like, it's this so is bad. So lackluster. In in <laughs> theory, Trag is insane. Like in theory, Trag is this every time. It's the 3600 Trag every single time. I remember when when Trag felt super good. Yeah. It just I doesn't actually time, it doesn't play like I, that. I think the last time that I played Tragodia was uh like 2013 2014 like pre dragon rulers oh uh, no sorry uh pre what was it it was post dragon rulers like mermail fire no pre dragon rulers mermail fire fist man i'm getting old dude my memory is just going um, <laughs> joe, joe bogley sent me a mermail list to play and uh he was siding tragodia and deck dev and i was like this is this is nice right mm-hmm. and uh that was the last time. I think I sided it in once that regional. I got top four. And ever since then, I've just looked at Tragodia and, like, you can just stay in the binder, buddy. <laughs> All right, so where's this going? He's about to get caught with the nastiest gores. <laughs> he is about oh, to get caught man. with the nastiest gores. When I tell you, I don't care which monster attacks first. I'm Rageki breaking the other one that's not attacking, and I'm letting the attack come in, and I'm dropping his gores. Okay, he's attacking for 3,000. I'm going to pop my Stratos. So let me just think about this. So I could Battle Fader here, which would... Uh, yeah, I'd rather just pop my Stratos and then he already used the effect. He hasn't normal summon yet, but I don't see where probably just end up setting a Raiko. So the only thing he could do is he could copy. He could copy and go for Black Rose if he has Plague in hand. He was checking his graveyard a lot. 
Um, but he would just have to have the one plague in his hand, which would be like, you got it, boss. So I'm going to do this on the attack. He's probably like, oh, he popped the Stratos, man, why? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I hope that he's competent enough to know what just happened. Oh, thank lord. Somebody else goes and gets the actual Gores token. I thought I was alone on this. I don't always do it, so don't expect that from me every time, but I did it that I'm, time. I'm going to now. I'm holding you to the Oh no, don't hold token. me. Don't hold me to it. Cuz like if he if he plays any card from his hand now, yes, the Tragodia gets lower. Yeah. So it's, he's in a really awkward was spot. Attack on field instead of attack like original attack because armory arm just goes hard. Oh, it would it would kill him right now. He would die. That was a blue eyes. You're done. Yeah. <laughs> the good thing is though, armory arm will still make him take the total attack of what is it? Uh, the monster that's attacking over. So like, if I have a four thousand guy. Well, oh wait, no. I guess it. I guess it wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. it has to be original. Yeah, that sucks. Trag is just this card's attack. It gains attack. It doesn't say attack becomes. Yeah. yeah so he's doing. He he must have drew the. Um, oh, he's doing level four. Ooh. Brio the Gores. <laughs> yeah. So like, there's no. Okay. So he did draw the one plague, but instead of copying Ooh. Celestia and doing Black Rose Dragon, he's doing this, which I'm fine with. I'm curious to see if he has anything saucy. Make Colossal Fighter. <laughs> So this is great for me, unless he has like a JD or something. Okay, that's not a four fly sworn. Two hamsters. I feel like just setting the hamster there would have been better than making Brio. I don't think so, right? Because then we already discussed that like he's in a bad spot if he has to play any cards from his hand, because then my token is bigger than his Tragodia. Yeah. So he wasn't he wasn't I, that Gorse put him in a really bad spot. Okay, a simple Catasta right here we'll just do. Do we even bring Treeborn up at this point? That's a good question. We don't have to unless you're like afraid of possible Eren. Yeah, but then even then like the the Catasta is still on the field because he's not going to summon Eren and out the Catasta with three cards. I don't mind the Treeborn being there, but it's not. Let's see. I'm, I mean, I'm bringing it out. Uh, yeah. I always I always think about the the little like you know minor interactions like that. I do I'm too, like, but I don't think I'm in any gonna malicious edge me one day, and I'm gonna just feel really sad. Yeah, I don't I don't <laughs> think I'm in any danger bringing it back. Is how I feel in this situation. I also have the opportunity to go for Goya, so this opens up my play to be Goya Guardian now, which is actually right. yeah Goya take his Brio puts him on a really bad major major back foot. Yeah, yeah, because then he has to summon to attack over it, and then a Goya is still there. So, I think the Goyo might be the way. So the only way that I see it backfiring in some form is if we Goyo his Brio, he summons a four-star, puts his Plague on top, summons his own Goyo, Goyo's the Brio back and then bounces our Goyo. Yeah, that could absolutely happen. Um, all right, you know what? I think because that is visible to us, I'm just going to go with the Cataster play. Yeah, just kind of get it out of... Get it out of existence altogether. Yeah. <laughs> because that could that that's very easy for it to happen if he could just summon a third hamster and just do that and like And he's on three or four names. He he's on three Wolf, names. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Three names. We have plenty of defense in our hand. We need a hero. Like not a hero. We need a monarch. A miracle. Or a monarch, yeah. Yeah. I need something that can proactively push. Right now, my hand is just all, like, defense. I think I sided a Battle Feeder out, too, and I'm still drew both of them. It's annoying. For Orlando, I was honestly surprised that I didn't play against any Gladiator Beasts, because when I was walking around, I expected I expected a good bit of Blackwing, and I expected a good bit of, oh, ditch the fourth name. Yep. Is there a JD there? Yeah, there's a JD. He milled it earlier. So this is where shit gets a little bad. Unless I draw, if I draw Miracle, then I'm just the best. Yep. Now, do we, do we drop the Gores here to make him pay another thousand? No, I do not want to take any more damage. Oh, he didn't attack because he's afraid of the Gores. Oh, okay. that is, Frog. we're nice. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does he not know that you can pay multiple times? This doesn't say once per turn, like right now. No, I didn't it, get it rotted. It never got eroded, no. Still the same broken card that's just been power crept. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little shocked. Get a free search, thin the deck a little more. Yes, we desperately need a swap frog. Where are you at? Oh, yeah, we do have uni. Hmm. Uni frog is actually not terrible in case he has a master restrict. Yeah. Yeah, I he think. I saw that he sided it in. He only milled one, I think. Yeah, I'm actually going to get this as a precautionary thing just in case. If he goes to end phase again and just mills four and passes, I'm going to be very surprised. Yeah, I mean, he did it last turn blatantly. Okay, he's getting another one. Okay, okay so he, I think he just forgot last turn. Loki almost thought about trying to fit a second Junk Synchron, but you already kind of play two with the Rota. But, like, just actually having a second one is a little different. Yeah. Substitute's dope, because now we can just thin our deck and try and draw a Miracle or a Monarch easier. Right. This, 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 isn't, this isn't the worst. At this point, whenever I'm on DB, I just automatically assume that everybody knows I'm going to turbo through everything. So if the first subsidy doesn't get negated or anything like that, I just go. <laughs> yeah, that's actually completely fair. Like, I'm being ridiculous right now, to be honest. Um, you're not wrong. Okay, so I might as well bounce this to my hand. Yep. Soft dupe lock that uh, gets outed by a thousand life points. <laughs> yep. He's paying a lot, though. Like, it's to the point where a brain control is game. Yeah, brain is going to be a wipeout. Um, Monarch and miracle. Yeah, uh, brain, econ, monarch, miracle. All of these, like, we have so many cards. I know he is sick of my shit. <laughs> like, just die already. <laughs> Uh, do I want to take three and then what's going to happen here? So I'll do, I'll do this. Yeah. Take three, drop the gores, make him pay down to three K just so that way brain or econ gets it for us. Ugh. Oh, Gardna. Shadow mirror. Okay, Caius, we're nice. Yeah. We still got that second one coming next turn, though. Yeah, that's fine, because we have Swap Frog to balance our guy, and we have Battle Fader to live. Yeah, I think we, um... Yeah, we definitely Caius. I think he's gonna be the kind of player that Necrogarden is the Caius here, just so that way he can pay another thousand with JD. That's fine. So we get the Garden out of the way, too. Yeah. So I'm just thinking here, um, so I, Caius this attack, he's definitely, yeah, okay. I would even, I would, uh, oh yeah, swap box going to be in defense, because we're going to Ex Exactly, we're, yeah. we're, it, it just so happened that we're like, so low that this has to happen this way. Yep, there's the guard now. I don't think he's going to be happy when he sees this, this uh, battle fader. <laughs> I miss Light Sworn, like playing Light Sworn. Yeah. Because, like, I used, to, I used to just love it so much. I think from, like, September 09 until right around Edison, like, after Edison. I think I got, like, after Edison format, I got, uh, I got like, one regional top. So, mm -hmm. like, September 09 to May 2010. I, I topped every regional I played in with Lightsworn. 
between Pure and Christia Swarm. Christia Swarm was way different though. I played like one Shire. I was like, it's a name and a fairy. This card's great. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what's played now on Christia Swarm. That's a uh... I don't mind it. Shire is actually kind of nice because it's a searchable fairy too, which a lot of people don't realize that is a big deal. Like if you have Herald in your hand, you can play Charger Library Gate and get Shire. And I know it sounds like crazy, but you're you're already playing Life Swarm, so you're already kind of like crazy. Yeah. Summon the Honest. Okay. I want a Goyo Guardian, his Swap Frog, and send my Treeborn. <laughs> mm -hmm. I got to uh, I got to Goyo a Stratos and search my Stratos. That was uh, that was pretty cool. Goyo a Stratos search, yeah. yeah. Whenever that happens, that's like a yeah. That is broken. That is broken as hell. So what did he just do? He put a card on top. Yeah, for the plague. Okay. I always check the log too, just to make sure they didn't put it on the bottom. Yes. Yeah, that's a good point. See, the only book I'm not even gonna lie. There's a lot of stuff that people can do that I probably wouldn't even. Uh, put in the, yeah. Yeah, like the fact Man that. Shit. <laughs> all right, like that was one of them. Why is the Goyo actually coming out right now? <laughs> oh, he just wants to. Well, you could have done the same thing. With just honest attacking over the swap. Yeah. Eh, nope. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> so he doesn't pay oh, here. No. Maybe I'm just bad. I think he just wants like a buffer for his life points. And that's why he did the, uh, yeah. the swap. This makes sense. Yeah. I've been at work all night, so my apologies if I'm a little slow right now. <laughs> this makes total sense. <sighs> okay, so now what? I wonder what he's thinking so hard about. Yeah, because you have to... Oh, and a wolf. We're nice. Yeah. And the Shire. And the he's Shire. He's not playing Christia, but he's playing Shire. That was a terrible draw. Vanity's fiend, where your ass was at? <laughs> yeah, so let me see. I bring back Treeborn. I tribute. I get rid of JD. I attack over Wolf. He then... Yeah, just the one honest in his grave or both? Both are in the grave. Okay, cool. I'm not really worried about honest right now because you can't play around that. So uh, banish this, attack this. He still has these two. This is going to take Caius... For 400, this comes in directly to my life points, and perhaps I, if he has a monster to summon, I would die there. So he needs to have a monster. Okay, so I still, I'm not, I'm not dead yet by what's on board. Uh, yeah. So. I think that's just our best case play. You said what? If he has something else, if, if he has something else to attack, we're just kind of done anyway. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Yeah. My face when he drops a third honest. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'll be like, thank you. I, I needed a way to win this game because my deck is being very rude, not giving me a damn econ brain control or um We sided out one econ, didn't we? Yeah, we did. But still, there's still yeah. so there's two brain controls in my deck technically right now, which is still like more than any other deck could have. Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. And uh three miracle fusions, by the way. Just yeah, just yeah. so three. So during the event. Like play testing, you know, I'd see like one miracle fusion. I'm like, okay, cool. Usually that was enough to get me there. During the event, when I tell you there were multiple times where I was just sitting with two miracle fusions in my hand, like ready to go. And yeah. Just like just just do one thing to open it up. I, I miracle fusioned once and then miracle fusioned right after, got rid of the zero I just made, wiped their board. I was like, okay, cool, this is nice. But then there was one or two games where I was double miracle fusion, no heroes in sight. Come on. What do I want here? I just want Miracle Fusion. Yeah. I would Miracle Tribute it for Vanity's Fiend, attack for 24.
I hate this matchup though. It's so it's so erratic. Like you don't know what is going to happen. Yeah, it's probably one of the highest like in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh, I think one of the like highest like dice rolls of a deck. It's like if the mills aren't there, you don't play. If your hand's not there, you don't play. But when it is, oh god, is it? <laughs> what did he just do that for? You have double frog in the grave. Hey. <laughs> yeah, why he shows up. Okay. Sometimes people forget. Yeah. That was just interesting. Uh So Zero's going to be at 3500 attacking this is not enough. I'll just see if I could kill him. Hmm. It's funny because DD Crow is so bad. It does like DD Crow doesn't stop Miracle Fusion. It doesn't stop um, Only Treeborn in, Frog. Like, super simplified game states. Is it is it an actual card against this deck? And yeah, that's what I love about it. It's just like okay, cool. They think they're doing <sighs> stuff putting Crow in. I'm like awesome. So. Doing 25 over the swap or doing 24 direct with the vanities isn't really too much of a difference, but I always go for the most damage. So I think we do just like poke over the swap, tribute uh tribute zero for vanities, and then pass. Yeah, the other play that I'm looking at now is I could go tribute tree barn frog for vanities, and I could still uh this could still beat over this because he's yeah. bigger. And then vanities get rid of the Caius and then he's just stuck on a swap frog. He's stuck on just swap frog. And like, I don't know what this that could possibly do with just swap frog against vanities. Absolute zero, right? Like, doesn't that seem ridiculous? Yeah. Especially with both JDs out of the equation at this point. Now I'm right? thinking like brain control. If he has brain, he has my swap frog still. He could brain zero attack over. He would attack over vanities for 600 attack for a thousand. That's exactly game. game. Mm. That's annoying that brain control would kill me. I don't this deck doesn't typically play brain control though. But like I maybe mean, maybe I do just like keep it simple. Just go attack over swap. He drops to like no life points and then Vanity's Fiend just gets you know, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna play I'm yeah. gonna do this. Because at that point we just lose to like brain and a normal summon as right. opposed to just brain. Five hundred more. And he's only got 13 other cards in deck to work with and the one in his hand. Yeah, you take 2,500. So your life points are at nothing. Yeah, main phase two. All right, he should be cooked. And then this kills him next turn, no matter what. Oh yeah, Unifrog goes in. Yeah. <laughs> that monster doesn't yeah. matter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like he's he's gonna set a monster and I'm gonna summon right. Unifrog. Oh. Hot of Avarice. Well, we knew he played it. We just didn't know if he played more than one. Yeah, he just I mean, I got my miracle fusion, so I'm not mad that he got his thing. He's gonna summon all the monsters first. This is dope. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care what he, he could draw Shire and she could be big enough to beat over my Vanity's Fiend and I'm still summoning Unifrog and attacking directly next turn. Like, I do not care what he does. Like, he's doing, he's doing all of this. I remember a while ago, you, uh, I asked you something. I was watching one of your games on, uh, on DB. I think it was on DB at least. And, um, I was like, why did you do this instead of this? And you're like, oh, sometimes I like to play with my food. <laughs> yeah. No, I literally. So if you ever see me doing a, a video like this type of video, um, this is not a tournament, right? So I'm allowed to do plays that I normally wouldn't do to see how they actually yeah. pan out. And that's kind of the point. Like, I'm not trying to play like, oh, you know, YCS champion level dueling and all that extra stuff. It's just like, I do want to play well at the end of the day, no matter what. But sometimes I'm curious about how things work because there's the conventional play and then there's the unconventional play that might actually be better and you don't know until you try. So that's kind of what I do. Effective yet experimental. Yes, like just now in tournament, I might have been very inclined to just go like, yeah. 
uh, in tournament did we we two would right because we didn't yeah that was that was that was clean two oh <laughs> yeah i'm just gonna pull up the replay real quick while we talk um in tournament though i would have well i did give it thought but i give a lot of thought to the idea of like leaving up vanity's team plus absolute zero to just swap frog and ultimately i think i would have came to the same conclusion of like okay you lose the brain control if he goes brain control to zero put swap swap frogs already in attack mode and then like that's just that's actually game right there just those two is that a Rinyan in his hand? It is a Rinyan. Which I forgot that was a card. So, have you been testing Frozen Soul format at all? Like the Highlander format? I have played about two or three matches, and uh, my deck is just, you know, normal. I, I started from the from the limited list, and and I went from there. Yeah. Um, I haven't played. I haven't gotten to like cooking anything crazy. So it's funny because Rinyan, I just saw it be played in that format. I forgot that it was a card that was legal, and somebody um somebody used it against me or i was watching a duel maybe and i saw a ring i was like oh shit i forgot this is a thing because you just need like you can only play one of each card so you, you kind of just, just need, names. need yeah you just need names uh but ring yan i you have you have like nine names without ring yan so i don't even think you need that card yeah the only plus i think would be like if you have one Raikou, you could you could warrant playing hamster because it's some right like hamster, right it's a two-star beast yes yeah i think that's yeah. exactly right Nope, the only book just absolutely bugged the fuck out. Luckily, everything is getting wiped down anyway. I don't know what is going. What is going on with this? Do you see this? Sometimes when I would play, uh, like sometimes four or five in the morning, I'm just like on the verge of going to bed, and I'm like, you know what? Let me play some rated goat right now and just rail people with grave keepers one time for the one time, and uh, and they'll set a spell or trap, and it'll show like somewhere between their spell and trap zone and their hand. And it'll just kind of hang out there until they activate it. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? Like, the, the motion to set the card stopped halfway through. And it's just there, but not there. Yeah. You know? This is this duel played out so funny to me. We're not uh, on one of your recent videos. Weren't y'all, like, watching through uh, a replay? And um, it, uh, or no, I think it was actually for the, uh, the local tournament uh, on the stream, either last night or night before. And, uh... Something happened when somebody like activated Torrential or something and it just like stopped and it was like Torrential Tribute cannot be found or something like that. <laughs> and I was like, what the hell's going on? Oh, he had MST. This card is so bad. It did absolutely nothing and it never could have done anything either. There was never a point where I didn't have two heroes. There was never a point where I didn't have multiple waters. So yeah, this was the end of the game. And then I guess the, it bugged out here. Yeah, but I just summon Absolute Zero, Tribute for Vanity's Fiend, and the replay broke right here, which I'm totally fine with because this replay was already fucking unhinged. Whatever's going on with this ghost <laughs> swap frog over here. But yeah, so he had two deck cards at the end. He he drew MST, which I personally still advocate for not having this card in against frogs, but people do whatever the fuck you want. And then DD Crow is just awful. Um, the only time that I could see it even being relatively like not good, but just okay, is if it's turn one, I go summon Swap Frog, Sentry Born, bounce it to my hand, pass. And you go DD Crow my one tree worm because that's the only one I have. After that point though, this card becomes like really bad. Yeah, it's like it's only really good whenever they're not drawing optimally and they're having to rely on like the the, the single water, the single tree born, right. the single hero. And and even then, like if if the deck's drawing that badly, if your deck needs the you know the one off crow to to beat it, then you know you're kind of struggling. But, this you know, sometimes is hilarious. His hand just destroys back row, and we didn't see a single he back kept row. Cold wave in, bro. I don't have a look frog. at look at every card you see. There is there's not a single back row anywhere, and he has three yeah. back row removal cards this game. These are three dead cards basically. Like Lila's fine because she's a light sworn, but this is hilarious. And cold wave, cold wave doesn't stop. Like our deck is only. Is, is over half monsters yes like i'm not trying to you know stop them from playing miracle fusion for one turn like i yeah. want them to not play it at all yeah i would say curse seal uh, before uh, yeah over over cold wave. this like, is interesting too cold i don't wave, think this man. is the worst because he knows i'm gonna like i'm, I'm playing triple kai like he knows that's a thing it's yeah. just funny that i think that this should just be another mask restrict unless he was already on three of it but it looks like i can't tell if he's probably playing more than one mask i would imagine and he just said fuck it i'll bring this in too for caius um but whatever like this yeah 
That was good, though. Maybe this was a good show. One of maybe he's testing Frozen Soul Four matches with two JDs and two drivers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was great, though. I I thoroughly enjoyed. I haven't played Hero Frogs in so long, and I feel really powerful when I play this deck because it just rewards you for playing well, and it also like it's one of those decks that when it's when it is drawing off the top it's really scary because it thins itself out so we had that one turn where we did substitute then the following turn we finally got our um we got our miracle fusion and it was like that's exactly what the point of the deck is to do is like thin it out to where there's nothing but good cards we still had brain control uh did i time out okay no let's look so we had a lot of cards left so we had the brain and econ that i kept complaining about not drawing yet uh soul exchange at certain points would have been good like when i had the caius a soul exchange would have been amazing like soul exchange the goyo um Caius the JD you have a wolf in my swap frog I don't care uh there's also a Geki break and then there was triple miracle fusion at the time which was also just insane so, so many good cards to draw to just start pushing harder into whatever he had yeah you know lots of lots of lots of good draws um and that's kind of what the deck does like draw, having triple miracle fusion on your deck is busted like that shit i was like i know at some point i have to draw one right like come on deck give me one so but yeah thank you phil for stopping by the channel this was really fun uh talking to you and uh i would definitely like to have you back on just to do another video and maybe play something different or whatever and just talk it seems like a, a nice vibe so definitely i appreciate being on uh love the podcast love the youtube uh love kenny's crazy ass yeah kenny's <laughs> crazy but yeah definitely a pleasure to be here and uh i do look forward to popping back in yeah so last thing i'll say is guys again we are doing a now that the prize is up to 500 dollars, so we have a 500 dollar uh tournament coming up october 28th in edison format but you can only play one of each card i highly recommend you do test for this format it is not easy to play highlander i'll actually show a deck list real quick so you can see what it looks like but the format is not what you think like it, i don't think that you should just show up like for example this is a deck that i i played it last night in a tournament um, we have like little frozen soul tournaments and our i'm their podcast discord server so we're just testing these out and i played this last night and it was it was really fun like i did a lot of technical plays and a lot of different um combos and stuff i also have I have like a Blackwing deck, which I'll pull up. So this is like my take on Blackwings. Surprisingly, there's a lot of Blackwings. So you can play like Blackwings and it has like value turbo elements to it. You see like the Ryko, the Greffer, uh, Armageddonites in here. I'm gonna move this over, the OCD. Um, <laughs> all of these are warriors that are searchable by Rhoda. So Rhoda searches this entire suite right here, which is a lot of cards. Rhoda's one of the best cards in the entire format. Then you can still play triple Stratos because Rhoda E-Call Stratos is three Stratos. So I like that about this a lot. Um, all of the traps are just broken traps. Like most of these are actually limited to one anyway. Like this is, this is at one. This is at, this is at one. This is at one. This is at one. So yeah, the deck is, it's actually, it feels really well when I was playing. Like it feels pretty good when I was playing it. Um, and then I have like one other deck that i was playing around your, with your lists look so much better than the the two that i have <laughs> yeah and it, again it, i don't the thing is i don't actually play um i haven't been playtesting it as much but everyone who i know like a true hero og stango uh multiple people in the discord like enraged peacock all the people in the discord server they've been playing it a lot so their decks are getting more and more refined over time and i'm just kind of going based off of my Yu-Gi-Oh fundamentals which i do have obviously very strong Yu-Gi-Oh fundamentals but last night when i was playing this deck i kept tweaking it and tweaking it after the tournament and now i got it to this so i haven't played this version of it yet where it's like like now i have instant fusion in the deck and um, I had that Stalos in and I had Level Eater in. I took those out and I put in Unifrog because the situation kept coming up that was very specific, but I think it comes up more often than not. I put Jinzo in the side deck. I think Jinzo is actually really good against like GBs. People will try to play GBs in this format. Um, Jinzo is just really good because one, you'd never expect it. And two, just 2400 and get all traps is absolutely unhinged in this format. So a lot of things you have to consider. Um, cards that you never would even play outside of frozen soul format are going to come up low-key against hero beat i thought about siding two malevolent catastrophes or like one uh one malevolent catastrophe and one like dust tornado yeah for, uh, for orlando i i forgot that malcat was was in edison yep. up until about like two or three weeks ago and i was really looking at it i was like this card is just crazy yeah no it is it could catch them really badly off guard it does have some issues but i think that as long as they don't have starlight rose specifically i'm fine either getting solemn or just taking out all of their back row yeah it's 
pretty broke. But all right, I'm going to end this here. Uh, I will catch you guys in the next one. Again, thanks to Phil and peace out.